So I've never actually done a hardware video on this channel. Almost exclusively I talk about software and Linux and all this stuff that associated with Linux. I've never done one on actual hardware that I own before. For the most part, I just assume most people don't care. And honestly, while I do own a lot of hardware, most of my hardware is actually quite old. Now, the obvious exception to that is the keyboard that I talked about on the podcast, that it was quite expensive and I'm quite proud of it, but telling everyone that you spent a lot of money on a custom mechanical keyboard kind of feels weird, so I don't talk about that at all, all that much either, other than the fact that it's awesome and uh, it was entirely too expensive. But that's not the point. The, the point is that normally I don't do hardware stuff on this, but over the last four or five months or so, I've been on a quest of a certain sort. I've been trying to find a really good mouse. Now, the mouse that I've w used prior to this for like a year and a half or so was the MX Master 2. You might not be able to see it, but it's sitting back there on my standing desk. And it's a good mouse. It still works fine. It's a little worn out, but it was fine. So when I started to think about getting a new mouse, I was just going to replace it with the new version. So what I was really looking for was USB-C, simply because <laughs> micro USB or whatever the hell they call the little the the really little USB connectors that are a pain in the ass if you don't get right the direction the right direction I was looking for a USB-C mouse so I picked up the MX Master 3 which uses USB-C and it's almost as good as the second one I don't care for the side scroll wheel on it nearly as much and I don't know it it feels a little cheaper to me than the the second one did but it's still a good mouse it's also like $100, so it's pretty expensive. So, I was using the MX Master 3 for a while, and it was good, it's fine. The thing is, is the thing about this desk is that it's it's wide, but it has a drawer over here underneath this monitor, so the where the keyboard and stuff sits is on this little pull-out keyboard tray, and it's only about 25 or 26 inches wide. So that's the reason why I don't use a full-width keyboard, I have to use a smaller one, but it also means that I don't have a lot of room for a mouse. And I also don't have a lot of room for a mouse pad. And the thing about this desk is it's made of oak and it's old. So it has scruffs and scratches and all this stuff on it from use. So it makes it a necessity to have a mouse pad. And the problem is, is that for the most part, if you just want a mouse pad they can, and that sits off to the side of your keyboard, it takes up space, right? And I don't really have that space. So when DistroTube did his video on the Kensington trackball that he owns... I was like, you want to run? I've never tried a trackball before, and a DT usually knows what he's talking about, so I'll buy this thing. It's, it was like $80 at the time. I'll leave links to the ones that I'm talking about in the video description, but the Kensington one, I bought it, and I got it home, and it sucks. Like, it's so bad. <laughs> like, I don't, I can't, I, I don't know whether or not there's a setting somewhere, either in software or hardware, that I needed to change in order to get this thing to be more accurate, or if it just wasn't compatible with the way I use a mouse. But for whatever reason, that is the least accurate pointing device I've used since like the like the manual ball mice that used to be the norm. You know, you know what I'm talking about? The mouse had like a, a ball at the bottom. And <laughs> those things weren't accurate at all. Like they had rollers and stuff to X and Y rollers. But anyways, the point is that Kensington trackball is very very inaccurate like if you want to edit a video in that thing where you actually have to have the have to accurately slice you know like a timeline it's almost impossible it, like, it just did not work so at that point I was kind of like maybe a trackball is not for me you know maybe this is just the way all trackballs are I'll go back to using the MX Master 3 and I did for a little while like I couldn't use that for more than a week I don't even know if I made it a week it just was not a good device but I'm kind of stubborn, you know, like everyone, a lot of people say the trackballs are really good. So I figured, you know, what? screw it. I'll try a different one. So then I ended up with this one here. Now, this is a Logitech something or the other. I don't know the exact model. Uh, I will look it up and again, have a link in the video description. And uh, the difference between this and the Kensington one, which I can't actually hold up because it's, you know, elsewhere. I keep looking up actually where it's at, but... The difference between this one and that one is that that one is a finger tracker, meaning that you, you do it with the, your, the claw. This one here is a thumb tracker, meaning you use it with your thumb. 
and this is a good device. It's really accurate, and it kind of feels like a normal mouse. It's kind of shaped like a normal mouse. You can actually hold it like a normal mouse, and it has the normal mouse you know, button placements, and it has the normal scroll wheel and stuff. Whereas with the Kensington, the scroll wheel goes around the trackball, and that's really annoying and was really hard to get used to. And it was also really freaking loud, but that was kind of behind the point. The thing is about this one is that for the longest time, I didn't know how to clean it. Like, I'm a dude, so I don't read instructions, like, at all. So uh, there's a little hole at the bottom of this, and I just thought that that was a place to put, like, a Q-tip so you can clean it. Uh, it wasn't for like a, until, like, a week ago that Zany told me that that um, hole there was so you can put something sharp in there to pop the ball out so that you could actually clean inside the hole. I felt like a dumbass because of course that's what it's for, but up until that point, I just assumed it couldn't be cleaned and it needed to be cleaned because the ball was had a lot of friction and it just was not smooth and it became almost unusable. And because I didn't know how to clean that thing, about sometime, actually, sometime in early January, before I knew how to clean that and assumed that it was just broken, because again, much too lazy to read instructions, I decided I was going to try one last trackball, and I looked for some recommendation, and I saw a recommendation from, from Craft Computing about the Elecom Huge, and that looks like this. Now, I saw this, and I was like, this thing looks cool. Like, it looks neat, right? It has a lot of buttons on it that you can program, and it looks like it's neat, and Craft Computing uh, has said that it was really good, and it took ages for this thing to get here. Like, I only just got this this week, and I ordered it in early January. It came from Japan, and apparently shipping is a big deal now. But the point is, I got this thing, and it's just as inaccurate as the Kensington one, only it seems to be something that you need to break in a little bit. I, I looked at some Reddit posts, and apparently you can go through and use it for like seven or ten days or whatever and it gets smoother like the, that's the problem with this one isn't so much that it's inaccurate like i can actually edit a video and do all the stuff that you need to do with a normal mouse on this on the elecom huge and it works fine it's just not smooth right and now that i know that you can pop the ball out like this i figured well you know maybe there's just something in there that is uh you know keeping it from being smooth but that doesn't seem to be the case and like if you if you're doing big mo movements, it's not bad. But when you're trying to do small movements, there's like some fr friction. It's not great. And the scroll wheel scroll wheel here uh, is on the side, and that has taken a, a while to get used to. So what's the point? Like, wh why am I making this video? Why why have I spent ten minutes talking about mice and drag balls? The reason why is because I I, I wanted to try to caution people that are out there looking for something new because. The thing about at least trackballs, if you're looking for a trackball, it seems to be very, very hit or miss or whether or not it's good or not. And there doesn't seem to be a lot of really good ones out there around this price point. I was never going to spend, There's there are a few out there that are like $250 or more that are supposedly fantastic trackballs. I'm never spending that amount of money on a trackball, As, especially now. Maybe if it was like my first one. And I w didn't have this knowledge of going through these three, and it was just naive about it, maybe. But now that I've gone through and spent three that are uh, bought three that are around a hundred dollars, I don't think I'd ever spend more than this on a trackball. This one here still remains my favorite out of the three. The Kensington one is useless for me because it's just not accurate at all. Trying to pinpoint w you know where you need to click is just not possible uh, without you know trial and error. Really, it's not great. Uh, the Elecom, I'm going to continue to use that one and see if I can get it to be broken in like they say on Reddit. Hopefully that gets a little bit more smooth as you use it. Because apparently it collects some like hand oil or something like that. And it will get smoother. I did try some like some kind of like keyboard lube. Like this uh, Cryotox stuff. And that didn't work uh, to make it smoother. But anyways, the, the reason why I was making this video is just because I, I want to caution anybody out there who's out there looking for something like this. Is that... I highly recommend you not to be like me. If you find one that you, you order one and you uh, find that it's not right for you, send it back. I should have done that, uh, but I, I'm i usually stubborn and keep the stuff that I order. I hardly ever send anything back unless it's absolutely broken. I just would like to recommend that you don't be 
like me. If you find one that you don't that does, doesn't work for you, send it back. Um, because at least when it comes to trackballs, it seems to be very, very hit or miss. You know, the one that, thing that I miss is I used to have the G502 with the wire. Uh, it was a gaming mouse. It was way beyond more than what I ever needed. But I missed that thing because it had weights in the bottom. I don't know why I thought about that just now. But uh, anyways, I like a hefty mouse is, is the thing. is that I like a mouse that you know, has some heft to it. And it's not as big of a deal when you have a trackball mouse. But that, that was one of the reasons why I didn't like the MX Master 3. Was because it's... It's a little bit lighter than the MX Master 2 was, and it threw me off. The G502 had weights in the bottom. And that's one thing about the Alicom Huge here that I have a bigger problem with, is that this thing, it feels cheap. Like, it was like 80 bucks, but it feels cheap. You know, and that's not a good experience when you're talking that kind of money. Anyways, this is, was a rambly video. I'm sure it's not going to appeal to very many people, but I just wanted to put it out there. Uh, kind of to document my adventures over the last few months of trying to find a trackball that works for me. It, it, it's probably most of this has come down to the preference that I just seem to be happier with a trackball that uses the thumb instead of the index fingers and the and middle finger. So maybe that is. Anyway, so if you have comments about this kind of stuff, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'm going to stop now before I ramble on for any more time. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Today, Devon, Patrick L. Primus, Marcus, Megalyn, Jackson, I Tool, Steve A. Shabregger, Linus, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Did, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin E., Merrick Camp, Joshua Lee, J-Dog, Peter A., Crucible, Dark Bandit 6, and Glad A. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.